hello guys you're welcome again to my channel and if you haven't subscribed please click the subscribe button just below right the screen it is totally free of charge and do not also forget to click on the notification buttons right there so that you get our notifications when we release our new videos based on our previous 3d already introduction if you have not watched that video please go to our channel and watch the introduction to plotting three dimension in Python Jupyter. Today we'll be discussing how to plot a bar chart in Python. And so we want to go straight by first importing our, our regular uh, toolkits or our, our regular module as you would call it in Python. And so uh, of course we already imported this before but uh, for the benefit of those who just join us we, uh, I would be also um, important this toolkit. Now we need toolkit dot mplot mplot uh, 3D. Then we want to say uh, import 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 as, or we can say import um, as is uh, 3D as is 3d now we have that we're going to say uh, this time we want to import our matplotlib so we say uh, our matplot lib.pyplot as uh, plt this is what we normally do and we also want to import uh, we also want to import mat matplot oh I also want to import matplotlib dot cm as, uh, as cm. Then, and lastly, definitely we want to import uh, numpy numpy, so which we need as uh, np. Now, if we have this imported, and we want to be sure that we have not made any error, we just run and OK. It says no module named matplotlib, uh, and so. Uh, because we are used so you see it's good to always run each cell before we move on so that uh, now, uh, I think uh, uh, now uh, we, we're going to shoot a video I'm going to put a video also on how to uh, run syntax uh, errors or how to uh, run uh, troubleshoot uh, errors in your script okay now so uh, now what we want to do is we want to say figure I think um, not to keep the story long we can just go here and already copy this figure that we have here and just place it and so now we already have this here now what we next we want to do now is uh, we want to define the variables uh, or the data that we will be plotting and so we'll start by saying uh, let us call s s so let's say x and we say let x be an array of uh, uh, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we can decide to leave that and say even ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, so we can decide to leave this array, and um, we say we define another variable of y, which is the y dimension. And we say uh, let this be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, 10, 11, and 12, and 13, and 12. So uh, to be sure these are the same, so we can just quickly put print uh, length of uh, x. So if we print, if we run this, we should have the length of x to be 17. And uh, the length of y, the length of y to be 14. So we need three more for y. And so we say uh, that's too much. We just leave it at two, three. And so now by the time we print y again, we should have 17. So which we can just decide to keep this. Now we need also z. Now uh, z, we are going to say this time np.zeros. Uh, 
Now np.0z would be, now remember we had 17 uh, elements inside this uh, variables. So now we are able to define the dark plots that we want to use. And so uh, for the sake of the benefit, for the benefit we can just print out z. Let us print out z. Just write z and run and we see what we have in z. So we have z in zeros into 17 positions and so uh, this is our data for z. Now we also want to define the position. I will say position x. Let position x uh, be equal to np. Now because we are the defining position np now of 17 and so we say position of y to be uh, as well np uh, we also do the same of ones that 17 because you are dealing with the same uh, the same uh, elements and so uh, position of z this time remember it is not as what we have and so we just say let it be uh, an array let it be an array sorry let it be an array uh, into also 17 uh, values so we can just decide to say um, let's just take this one not to start writing all of our arrays again so we just include this here okay so uh, now we already have all of this three and we run okay everything that's fine no error and so now what we want to do now is to plot and now how do we plot we already remember that to plot we say uh, bar 3d now bar 3d into now we want to plot our x our y and our z now but we want to as well include the positions that we've just considered that the position of x should be on this and also the position of y and position uh, Z. Now, if we have this already, we can definitely run uh, this. And let's see if we run this, we should have um, a bar plot of um, a three uh, dimensional. Now, we can decide to even make our, our color look uh, quite nice. And we say color. Let's see what we have. We can decide to make our color. Uh, uh, oh, it's already red. Come on, it's already red, and so we say uh, green. Okay, okay. So, and uh, now we can see that um, uh, this is a nice uh, plot for uh, a 3D, and so we've been able to plot our bar, uh, bar plot. Now, what if um, we want to plot a bar plot that uh, we have to uh, stack this bar plot because? Uh, here we could just see um, one single um, color green. Now, what if we are comparing? We are comparing this data as a stack bar plot. Now, how do we also use this data to plot uh, a stack bar plot? Now, what we want to do is um, we want to do some some small work. Why we start by uh, saying for a position of Z. Now, we want to show plotting the stack bar plot now we say for this position now we just simply say np dot random now np dot random dot random for example we already have that it is 17 now we have np dot random dot random now which is the still the same uh, we have not done anything now what we do is now we say for uh, for i in range now for i in this range now we say for plot now what we are doing here is that um, uh, the height of the bar which are four bar we are setting that we are setting the height of the bar now what we want to do now next is um, we want to start uh, our z position we want to start our uh, z position for each bar now, how we do this is that uh, we say we can simply just say um, let's just look for something. Let's okay. Let's say z position is equal to um, our position was uh, z. 
Oh, so we already took the Z. So our our Z position, it's whatever values that we have in Z. So uh, we have not done anything. We are just starting this this Z position uh, from each bar by this uh, we define here. Now what next we want to define is we want to define our color, the colors that we want to stack this uh, plot with uh, or this uh, bar. And so let's just choose, for example, um, we choose uh, red. We say red. And we choose uh, we say blue. And uh, we also think, uh, come on, let's just take green. And we take lastly uh, yellow, or we can decide to take uh, blue. I think I always like it. Next, blue, yellow, uh, black, and red. Now we've defined, we've been able to define the color. Now what we want to do now is that I remember. We have already created a loop for this four um, bar. So we now create another loop saying for i, for i in range four, for i in range four. Now we want um, a x to be plotted. We want this bar to be plotted. In this axis. Now, what we do now next is we say our x, our y, and this time we are changing our position of uh, z to our z uh, pos or our z position. And so the other still remains position x, position y, and then we have also uh, position position uh, Z now but position Z will be indexed on should be indexed on this loop that we said I now position S should be indexed on that loop and now what next we do is uh, we also want to define inside this place our color that we've uh, already shown now and we say let color be equal to uh, colors that we've seen and so we also index this color inside Y so that it looks through all of this, uh, through the loop in this color. And so lastly, what we want to do is that uh, we want to add the height of each bar so that we're able to know where each one starts so that this program will know where each one starts. And so uh, how we want to do that is we want to take the S position that we have and we want to say plus this s position plus whatever it gives us equal to the position of z of z and so we want to leave also in this that to be uh, on the index of that now if we have that definitely we might not need this so we can just silent this and take this down okay sorry and take this down okay so when we keep that and when we decide to run this we should have a nice stocked. Uh, we could see that now our uh, our plot is now stocked. Uh, uh, our bar is now stocked based on the color that we've defined for it. So this could be what, how we want to define uh, our values or our variables uh, in this case. So maybe we could just make our plot looks better. Let's leave the loop. Let's leave the loop. So we say. Let's invert this plot, and to invert this plot, we say plot um, G, G C A, and we open, and we say um, dot invert, invert underscore. Let's invert the x axis in this case. So we say x axis, and when we hit this, we should get an inverted. Uh, very good. So at least, I uh, just wanted to show you. Uh, how a, a better uh, visual uh, this this is why I had to invert it so now this is a nice way to um, plot a stack plot uh, uh, bar in a 3d um, you could be wondering
you could be wondering how you could um, put this into uh, play with uh, when giving data in format of the CSV which I've already did in my past video or NetCDF definitely you can embed plot in this 3D with those data that you're giving uh, in your net uh, CDF or n dot, uh, dot nc or uh, dot, uh, csv whatever contents or whatever format of file you are given and so in our next video we'll be uh, also uh, uh, continuing from 3d but we'll be looking into uh, how to simulate how to simulate 3d where you see a simulation uh, of uh, our plot and so this is exactly what we'll be doing in our next video please do not as well forget again to subscribe or click the subscribe button uh, in our channel thanks for watching